Hi, you guys. It is Thursday, July 25th, 2019. My name is Doris, and this is the Knit and Pearl Podcast, episode 178. Fo- a foe and a few squirrels. You'll find out later. <laughs> That's the name, the title. Okay, you can find the show notes for this podcast on knitandpearl-doris.blogspot.com. In social media, I am one fine cow, all spelled out, lowercase. On Ravelry and Twitter, I am one fine design, the number one. On Facebook and Etsy, and I am Doris M. Smith, all lowercase, and smooshed together on Instagram. This podcast has a Ravelry group, which is the Knit and Pearl podcast group. But I said all that, but you don't have to remember all that because in the down bar below, there is a link to the show notes and to the Ravelry group and my Etsy store. And also, if you click the show notes, the beginning of the show notes is all the social media links. They're all clickable. You can go over there, click and follow me there. Thank you. I do a Ravelry group birthday shout out every podcast and we have three birthdays this time and I'm doing from the 15th to the 30th of July. We have Dancing Geek whose birthday was on the 16th. Web Family, her birthday was on the 20th of July and we have Grammy Karen, her birthday was on the 21st so I Hope that you all had a wonderful birthday, that you got to do all the things you wanted to do for your birthday, that you got spoiled with good fibery gifts, and most of all, that you enjoyed your version of a birthday cake. Happy birthday, you all. And if it was your birthday during this period and you don't share it on Ravelry, happy birthday to you as well. So... Um, a quick update. I had to do some redrawing of the pattern prize and I, there's a separate video, but I just want to say on here, Moe's Crochet, please go over and collect your pattern of choice, $10 or less Ravelry giftable pattern. Thank you so much. Okay. Story of the Week in Stash Enhancement. I have a little stash enhancement that has arrived and I have more coming. I think they'll be here tomorrow. So I have to go over here for a second. I ordered some Gazelle Baby Cotton. I think I I ordered it from um, Amazon for a project that was a squirrel that was on knitting uncrocheting um is really nice but the project just was not working out i spent two hours one night and ripped it out because it was too big i went down two needle sizes spent another two hours and was off in the pattern and i'm just like you know what right now this is not going to work so i have this lovely yarn and maybe it'll be that beautiful filet crochet shawl or a something else but it's nice it's really nice yarn so that was the stash so what else is going on I had a couple squirrels moments where I got distracted with my regular works in progress and started new things well the one project I was going to use my scrap yarn from my faux this week to make another shawl, but I, as I was crocheting it, I didn't like the way it was coming out, so I ripped it out and put it back, put it away. So then, when I saw this fillet shawl, let me see if I can see if I can pull it up. I don't know if I can. Let's see. Oh, this is not turned on. It's beautiful. It's from Furl's Crochet. And but I know it's probably not going to be something that it's in my in I don't can you look at my patterns on Ravelry? Ugh. 
I want to show it because it's just gorgeous. And I might make it if I have a time that things go better. Let me pull it up. On the big iPad. It's beautiful. It's called the Frontier Shawl. It's a it's a fillet crochet. Let me try to get the big picture up. It's just beautiful. But it wasn't working out for me. And like I said, it may I may try it again at a later date, but this time it just didn't work and I'm done with it for a while. <laughs> so so anyway, I have done more uncrocheting than crocheting, and the ones, my works in progress that were started didn't get a whole lot of love. Am I the only one that ever goes across that where I just like, the things that you're working on you're not really interested in, and the things, and, and then all the new things come and you just want to start everything, and then nothing gets done. <laughs> Hope I'm not the only one. In other news, Ted had, um, last week, I can't remember if I told you all, last week he had a stress test, a chemical stress test that they detected some uh, possible blockage in the heart. So on Monday, he went in and had a heart cath and two stents placed. One artery was 80% and the other one was 90% and they just stented it and he came home on Tuesday with some restrictions for a few days, but he is back to normal and feeling the difference in his endurance. He says he really feels the difference. And so we're moving forward, but today, he, last night and today, he has come down with a, a, a bout of diverticulitis. So he's in pain and hurting today. So. This too shall pass, right? Okay, so that brings us, I decided to do a health pearl this week because I feel like maybe somebody needs to hear this. And it is about Ted's story and about not being afraid to get second opinions. So after Ted had the stroke and he got through his hospitalization, he was recommended to go to his um, general practitioner to make an appointment to see him. So we did. Ted at the time was having problems, problem with his hands. They were hurt, the hand, the affected hand was hurting him. And he has had a history of having carpal tunnel in that. And he mentioned to his primary doctor that he might have to have that done. And he said, oh no, you're fine. You don't, you don't need to do that. So then Ted decided he wanted to, he needed to go to a neurologist and the um, hospital recommended that he go to a neurologist. Well, we called his primary and said, you know, do you recommend a neurologist? His primary care physician said, he doesn't really need that right now. Whatever he needs, I'll yeah, you know, I will I will deal with it or whatever. He doesn't really need it. Well, Ted was like, no, I'm going to a neurologist. So he went to a neurologist, and he got relief for his arm. He got Botox injections to help with the tone. He also got a referral to a doctor who did the surgery on his carpal tunnel, and now he has relief from that. Ted decided on his own, without conferring with his primary care physician, to go to a cardiologist because Ted's type of stroke he had was called an ischemic stroke, which means there was debris from his arteries and stuff that went through his brain and caused the stroke. So he knew that there was issues and he didn't want to risk having this happen again or having a heart attack or whatever. So he went to a cardiologist He went and he, re he requested having a stress test. 
And with the stress test, they found that there is a possibility of some blockages in his heart. And he pursued having the heart cath and having his health be taken care of. So I said all that to say, don't be afraid to get second opinions. If you feel that you need to do something, don't be afraid or don't rely on your, just your general practitioner to make all the decisions for you, especially if you have feelings and thoughts of your own. Don't be afraid to get a second opinion. And I'm saying this because I felt like I needed to talk about it and maybe that somebody out there needed to hear this. I didn't really want to talk all that long, but this is the health pearl this week. Okay, so next up is my finished object. I have one finished object. Can anyone guess what that finished object is? Yes, I did do some finishing. I finished my Pretty Pretty Princess <laughs> by Rishaw. I call it Pretty Pretty Princess because y'all can't see it. But this is beautiful pink and every single yarn is sparkle yarn. It's beautiful, it's big, it's comfy. And I love it. I did, I wore it today because this morning in our neck of the woods, it was like 69, 68, and I was chilly when I went to work this morning. And so I put it on. And I will stand up and show you my very big and comfy virus, pretty pretty princess virus shawl. I love it. It's beautiful. Now, you know, I don't need all these shawls, but I keep making them because there's something that I enjoy doing. So yeah, here it is, the finished object I used. This is a I Love This Yarn Metallic. This is an I Love This Yarn Metallic. This is a Red Heart with Love Metallic. In the, in the fuchsia color, and that's what they are. And I used this crochet hook. It's a Furls uh, Streamline. Very nice. It's an enjoyable, it was an en enjoyable experience. But this new crochet hook, that is the one and only finished object. Hopefully, I will stop getting distracted by squirrels and focus on the things that are on my needles and in front of my face now. <laughs> so, surprise, surprise, the first work in progress in my bucket bag I got from, it's from, thank God for bags, isn't that pretty, is the second part of the Shelly Summer Top by um, what are the, uh, Nancy R Ricky, who is getting pearly with it on Instagram. I'm trying to pull this ball of yarn out of here. It's not coming out very easily. Mm. Sorry. So I started this on Sunday night, so I would have something to work on while we were waiting at the hospital. So I did that, and I did a couple rows since then. But this is the second portion of my um, Shelly Summer Top, which is a paid-for pattern on Ravelry by Nancy Ricky. The yarn is a Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend in the color Flower Garden, and the needles I'm using are my Knit Picks, or Knit, what is it, Knit Pro Zings, interchangeable in the US 8. Here's what the yarn looks like in the cake. It's so pretty. And yeah, hopefully I'll 
get some work done on this. But that's what I've got. I did on Monday and Tuesday in the hospital. The, the top consists of two rectangles that you seam together. That's it. So I did start that, so thank goodness for that. I did start something that is still a project. <laughs> so I'll put that over there for now. And deal with that later. I did some work on the Captive Heart Afghan, which is a paid for pattern. Uh, it's linked on Ravelry. It's by Carol, Carol Heger. The yarn is the Karen, uh, Karen one pound in the color peach. And then a Karen simply soft in white. The hook I'm using is an I Odyssey by Forel Furls. I love them. They're they're comfortable. They're nice. Um, There's where I was the last time you saw it, so I did quite a bit. And just for a reminder, let me move this out of the way so I can see what I'm doing here. This is how big this thing is. <laughs> Starts over here. And that's where I was, but look how long it is. So it takes a good bit to go down. Isn't that just so gorgeous? So pretty. And again, I forgot to bring up the beautiful finished object I have that I, that I crocheted probably 20 years ago. I think I was crocheting it before I met Ted 20 years ago. So this is going to be a long-term project that I'll pick up. I should have I should have been working on this thing instead of starting those other crochet things, those squirrels. <laughs> but anyway. And finally, the last thing that I've been working on is the No Fuss Shade Loving Shawl, which is a free pattern on Ravelry by Susan Ashcroft. The yarn I'm using is the Karen, what, Karen Jumbo in color Rosewood. The needle is the US 7, 4.5 millimeter, Eddie Turbo, 40 inch circular. And here it is. There's where I was last time. So, not very much. So I was working on that other project last night that I ended up ripping out and, and I planned on getting some rows on this and I didn't. It's beautiful. This is going to be a beautiful shawl and it's going to be a gift to Louise just because she's done so much for Ted and I over the last months. Yep. I do have some spinning. If you will be patient with me, I'm going to reach over here out of and take the um, thing, the, yeah, the bobbin off the wheel. I started, okay, what did I do with it? I thought it was right up here. There it is. I started the this it's Cam Camelot Dye Works. In the color cherry pie, it's hundred percent BFL wool for so I this is like the first two ounces. I started it, I don't know, shortly after the last podcast. 
I am. There's another. There's another bobbin started for the second portion, but I haven't got a lot done on it. It's really pretty. So I have done some stuff. <laughs> Just not a lot of some stuff. Anyway, Pinterest, you guys. I'm 59 years old. <laughs> I decided. I'm thinking about getting a tattoo on or before my 60th birthday. Is that silly? I don't care. I'm just going to be me. I started a Pinterest um what do they call them? Board of knit tattoos. I like that one. I really like this one. It says knit fast or die warm, but that's kind of big. Let me see. This one, uh, that one's pretty. Let me go back. This one I thought is kind of cool, but I would want color in it. That's kind of cool. Anyway, do you think it's kind of crazy for a 60-year-old to get a, a new tattoo? I don't have a knit, a knit tattoo. So, I would want that in pinks and purples, though, instead of... I would want it in pinks and purples. <laughs> anyway, that's on my my um, Pinterest boards. If you wouldn't want to go, I, there's a link you can go look. Finally, at the bottom of the screen, and the bottom bottom down bar below, and in the bottom of the show notes is a link to my Etsy store. There's, you know, I still haven't had the opportunity to go over and spruce it up, clean it up. You know, so, but go ahead, go over, like a few things. If you find something that you just can't live without, I will happily sell it to you and ship it to you lightning fast. Thank you guys so much. Please um, keep us, keep Ted especially in your thoughts and prayers to, that this um, diverticulitis will get well fast. <laughs> Thank you for coming by and spending a little time with me. And I will see you in two weeks for the next episode of the Knit and Pearl Podcast. Bye, you guys. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. There's more. I went downstairs. And I got the original. Is this upside down? Yes, it is. This is just half of it, but this is the one I made 20 years ago. This is, okay, so the thing about this one is the dog decided to chew it, and I had to take the first three rows off, so this side it doesn't have the contrast color. I guess I... No, I'm just leaving it the way it is. So, it's really big. Really, really big and heavy and beautiful. This is like a, a heirloom project for me. 
somebody one day, hopefully, will get this and enjoy it. Isn't that gorgeous? And like I said, this is just half of it. It's a very simple pattern. It's just double crochets and single crochets. Okay, enough of that. See y'all later.